Speaking of stupid ideas, um, yeah. Xenia Linux started as a joke. I, I saw yeah, the Gen so... 2 post. The Gen 2 post. Yeah, so... Yeah. I mean, everyone gets pronunciation wrong. That's fine. Uh, I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. I say Xenia Linux. Okay, um, sure. It was a joke between me and my friend Jack. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we like make a Linux show? And I was like, well, not really. It's kind of stupid if you don't have an actual thing to set you apart. And then he just said, oh, you know this mascot Xenia? And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, do the math. I was like, yeah, let's do this. Um, so literally from a joke, um, we started working on getting Gentoo, which... Mm -hmm. Don't worry about pronunciation. I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, um, sure. We got Gentoo. We put it in a squash affairs, which is what like live images use, mm -hmm. and just boot it. Um, but when you say just boot it, you've got to think, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Now, my solution at the time was let's make a custom in at Um which is, don't do that. So I spent about a month. Making a custom in RamFS, which would only work on VMs with Vertio um, hard drives, because those were the only modules I loaded. And it would, instead of mounting the SquashFS, it would actually just extract it to the disk. So it would take about 20 minutes to boot. Um, and yeah, and then I realized you can do the same thing in Drake up with about two command line arguments. Yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes to boot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's yeah. about the time it would take to boot a regular distro off of a tape drive. Uh, it depends on how the date's on there, doesn't it? If it's like all scattered around, it might take a Yeah, that's up. true. <laughs> I say 20 minutes, so uh, that's probably just slow virtual hard drives, but yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Well, I'm sure a lot of people don't know about the Xenia, Xenia thing anyway. So I guess we can talk about that for a bit. So oh, yeah. probably... the um, most people know the, the mascot of Linux being Tux. I don't remember who actually drew yeah. that. Because Xenia was um, Alan, Alan McKay. McKay. Yeah, okay. So Tux um... was by Larry Ewing. Ewing? One of the two. I don't know. Ewing. Probably, yeah. probably Ewing. Yes. <laughs> it's E W I N G. It's Ewing. Before someone crucifies me, I'm sure, I'm sure someone will correct me. Absolutely. Yes. So yeah, Tux is generally accepted as the mascot of Linux. However, as is often the case, there's usually multiple contenders at the time, people doing different things, and another one of them was uh was Xenia. Yeah. So. <laughs> When did you find out about this thing? Was it just when your friend was like, yo, here's this weird thing? I, I knew about her for like a long time because it's like this whole thing with her being a symbol of like the trans community and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's ingrained into different cultures. Um, but yeah, not not too long after we started on the district. Maximum six months. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Huh. <laughs> it's just like... I, I I didn't even know about this. Like I I found out about this when I searched for for Xenia Linux. So there's three things that come up when I search for it. One yeah. is your distro. One is yeah. the Xbox 360 emulator. Yeah. And the other one is this. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, it's almost like a competition with the emulator to see who comes on top of a Google search. Um, I think Xenia's on top right now, but yeah, like the emulator's you... on top. If you add Xenia Linux, it definitely is, because there's no oh, yeah. currently Linux build of it, I believe. Yeah, but you also get all the comment, like, Reddit posts of people saying, how can I run this on Linux? <laughs> That's true, yeah. If you, so, if you search Xenia Linux, yeah. it's all Reddit posts. Um, so you yeah. get, <laughs> on Google, it's the wiki. It's not even the website for Xenia yeah, Linux. Yeah. Uh, then a yeah. Reddit thread from three years ago, how to run Xenia online. I believe you... <laughs> yeah. I think you can... Run it in a virtual, oh, in a, in a, um, in a uh, wine, I think. Don't quote me on that. But yeah. I, I'm sure that's, ha have you gotten comments from people being like, why is this called Xenia? What, what are you doing? Oh, someone thought that it was a Linux distribution mm -hmm. or the Xbox 360. Oh. Because of the like, they, they thought it was like Linux running on the Xenia emulator. 
which is like it's a bit of a breach. I mean, I know Imolo talks about the 360. There's no way I'm. No, I was going to say I'm. That sounds like something Imolo had done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. If if it's anyone, it would be him. But yeah. So, d d most people seem to real like they read the Gen two part and they at least. I guess think it runs on 360 one thing, but has anyone tried, like, confuse what you're doing with that thing and come to the wrong place or something? Yeah, I mean, the main thing that happens is most of our, like, 99% of our users are Gentoo users. <clears throat> um, and this causes some confusion because everyone wants to use a merge. Like, absolutely everyone, the first thing they do is try to use a merge. Yeah. And, like, while we've got wrappers for a merge and stuff to integrate it with snapshots and stuff like that, it's kind of like using RPM OS tree on Fedora Silverblue. It's mm -hmm. your last option. But people on Gentoo, because it's their first thing in their mind, um, you'll see users which have added like 50 packages to the base set. And then when they update the Xenia install, it just breaks like that. Um, now, of course, it's very easy to fix this because of the way we do it is an overlay. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is just disable the overlay, boot in, update everything, then you're fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it definitely causes a lot of confusion, but it, that's more of an issue of our docs not being great. Yeah, Gen 2 seems like a, a really weird base to like want to do an immutable system because, you know, how heavy, how source heavy it is, how compile heavy it is. Like, yeah, if you if you go digging very lightly in any uh, any forums, like, hey, I use these compile flags, you should use this one, this one, this oh, one. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it, 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 that's what just seems like a weird base to do it off of. Okay, I mean... Most of the base, again, was because it's a joke, was like, oh, we use Gentoo, let's, let's yeah, do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Gentoo has really good build tools. Um, they have one called Catalyst, which is how they build their stuff. Um, one that people might be familiar with is like DE Bootstrap. It's the same sort of thing, but like Catalyst is amazing. It lets you set like all the packages you want, your use flags, like everything, um, and also like config and stuff. Um, so it's a good base because like the build is really good like the build tools also people say like all compile times are long on gentoo they're, they're not if you've got good like decent hardware mm -hmm. um so i think if i was to do a xenia build now um because we again have got that bin host and everything it takes like 20 minutes um mm -hmm. it's it's not a long build time obviously longer than other things but yeah it's, and also like they've got their binary kernels and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it's like we can just use them. Um, 